him I came to magnify his name I came to magnify the name of the Lord I came to magnify I came to praise his holy name I came to praise his holy name I came to praise the holy name of the Lord I came to praise his holy name And wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me Counselor, Prince of Peace and Mighty God is He Saving me and keeping me from all sin and shame Wonderful is my Redeemer, precious name Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me Counselor, Prince of Peace and Mighty God is He Saving me and keeping me from all sin and shame Wonderful is my precious name Since I have been redeemed Since I have been redeemed I will glory in this name Since I have been redeemed I will glory in my Savior's name since I have been redeemed, since I have been redeemed, I will glory in His name. Since I have been redeemed, I will glory in my Savior's name. I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood, I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon that cross. I know it was the blood for me. I know, I know. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon that cross. I know it was the blood for me. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon that cross. There's power in the blood for me. There's healing in the blood. There's healing in the blood. There's healing in the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon that cross. The blood for me. There's victory in the blood. There's victory in the blood. There's victory in the blood for me. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. There's victory in the blood for me. And victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I'm not Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine today. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. If you want to see the glory of the Lord come down, why don't you praise Him? Lift up your hands and praise Him. If you want to see the glory of the Lord come down, why don't you lift up your hands and praise the Lord? I see you praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the noontime, praise Him in the evening, praise Him all the day, Lord, lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Why don't you lift up your hands, lift up your hands, lift up your hands and praise the L-O-R-D, Lord. 
praise Him, I know, and the blessings will flow. Lift up your hands and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we praise your holy name. We lift up your name, O oh God. Your name is holy, O oh God. Oh, you alone is holy this evening, Jesus. Oh, you say without holiness, O oh God, no one can see God. Oh, no one can enter your kingdom, O oh God. Oh, we serve a holy God this evening, Father. Oh, you are the holy of holies this evening, Jesus. Oh, we bow before your presence, my God. You are worthy, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, yes, God, we thank you, God. Oh, we can have the victory in Christ this evening. Oh, you can make us victorious this evening, Jesus. Oh, God, we know that, Jesus, you are a winner, man, this evening. You are a winner, man, this evening, oh, my God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your blood. Oh, there is power in the blood. There is healing in the blood. Oh, there is victory in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, my Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for seeing us true this evening, my God. We thank you for keeping us, my God. Oh, yes, Lord. We thank you for sheltering us and clothing us. You are Jehovah Jireh, my God. You is our provider, Lord. You is our Alpha, Lord. Our healer this evening, Jehovah Shama. You are with us this evening, my Jesus. You are so good. You say, God, that you would not leave us, neither forsake us, my God. Oh, but you would be with us even unto the end, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus, we praise you, we praise you. Oh, yes, Lord, you deliver us. You say you would deliver us, oh God, from all evil, oh God. And no weapon that form against us shall prosper, God. Because we know that if God is for us, who can be against us this evening, Jesus? You say a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right. But it shall not come thy dear God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, yes, God. Oh, you cover us with your wings this evening, Jesus. You shelter us, God. You embrace us this evening, Father. Oh, we bless your name. We bless your name. Our God is a great God this evening. Hallelujah, Lord. And unto thee, oh Lord, do I lift up my soul. Unto thee, oh Lord, do I lift up my soul. And oh my God, have trust in Thee. Oh, let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. No, run to Thee, O oh Lord. Do I lift up my soul? Oh, run to thee, O oh Lord. And do I lift up my soul? When the my God of trust in thee, oh, let me not be. Shame. Let not my enemies triumph over me, and show me thy ways, and teach 
teach me thy path Lord show me the ways and teach me thy path and oh my God of trust in thee Let not my enemies triumph over me. Oh, show me the ways and teach me thy path. thy path and oh my God of trust in thee oh let me not be ashamed let not my enemies triumph over me
unending. Ten thousand years and then forevermore. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, and oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. I'll worship your holy name. Lord, I'll worship your holy name. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God, we worship your holy name this evening, Jesus. Your name is power, Lord. Your name is life. Your name can break every stronghold this evening, Jesus. Oh, there is no other name of the heaven, oh God, given towards men whereby men can be saved. That name, Christ Jesus. Oh, at that name, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, oh God that jesus christ is lord hallelujah oh the most powerful name that is the only name i know when you don't know what to say this evening just say that name that say that name oh god hallelujah thank you jesus thank you lord praise god god is good this evening amen hallelujah let's welcome our pastor praise god Isn't God good? I say, isn't God good? You're not hearing me tonight? Are you hearing me? Isn't God good? Good. Sung a little better. Hallelujah. You know, we were talking about something we need to get to understand more it's about that internal battle that we have as Christians. That internal battle between flesh and spirit. Once we understand that, we can learn to live an overcoming, victorious life. If you can't win the war inside of you, you can't win the war on the outside. Never. We will always lose that war. You know, people can start off well serving God and end up in the flesh. The Bible talks about that in Colossians, not Colossians, uh, whatever scripture. He says you started off in the spirit and you end up in the flesh. And he said, who had bewitched you? Means to say, a Christian can be bewitched. A Christian can be deceived. There's a thin line between flesh and spirit. A very thin line. One day we can be in the spirit. Next day we can be in the flesh. You know, sometimes you, you hear people like, you see, everybody watch crime watch. Or most people watch Crime Watch. And he boasts about how much million views that he would be watching around the world. Most of the time, people may not even watch him for one second. One second and they're going about their business. But he talks like that now. But you don't know that he was a preacher. Those who are young don't know that. He was on channel 4 as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's no preacher now. 
I used to listen to him. His father is a preacher. He is no Christian. And I'm not calling his name. Facebook would want to give me trouble. He's no preacher. Easily someone can move from loving Jesus to not loving Jesus. Or love Jesus uh, with all and then love him with a little peace. That's what I see in Christianity today. How can you? Trinity Broadcasting Network is a massive network around the world. And now you, last month you joined Dr. Phil, call his name now, to be associated in the satellite with TBN. How could you affiliate Dr. Phil with the gospel? He's not a believer. He's a psychiatrist. He's a sociologist. He's a, he's a natural man. He wrote a book recently on self. Everything is about self. While Jesus say you have to kill yourself. And so the world is going that way. When we are to preach the right thing, Jesus said, if any man wants to follow me, I go with Jesus. I'm not going with what the world is saying or anybody is saying. I have to go with Jesus because his word will last forever. His word is the word that is going to stand on that day when we stand before God. It's his word that is going to be what we have to give account to. And so the whole world is getting wrong side, moving away from what the gospel really is. This self-image is a problem, but you have to deny yourself. You have to crucify oneself. When people see you, they don't want to see you. They must see Christ in you. Got me? That's Christianity. Who wants to see you? Nobody wants to see me. They want to see the Christ in us. Once you see the Christ in us, then you're glorifying God. Whatever we are doing, we are glorifying God. Are you with me? So the moment you become a Christian, you expect a fight. An internal fight. And we understand the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darknesses, against spiritual weakness in high places. We know that Satan is our adversary. We know he's, he's our enemy. But you have a greater enemy that you have to first overcome before you can overcome the devil. And that enemy is self. Me and I. Once we don't once we don't deny, once we don't crucify and subdue self, we can't win the war against the enemy. He would always win. We would always lose. That's why Jesus said you have to deny yourself. It's not about me. It's not about you. But it's about Christ. That's the key. That's what Christianity is. People are falling away because they never continue. You know, Jesus had to go through that stuff of that internal warfare. Paul went through that. We talked about that last week. Paul says, the inward man, that's the new man that I received when I was born again. The inward man want to do, have that desire to do that which is good. But he found that there is another law fighting inside of him. It's called the flesh. And he found out that that is winning sometimes. And when he want to do good, he found himself doing evil. The reason why there's an internal battle. That's what deliverance is all about. It's an internal battle inside of us to do good or not to do good. To do good or to do evil. And Paul found himself many times losing that battle and realized that the reason why that he do that which is evil is because sin still in control of his life. But we should not have sin controlling our lives. That's why Jesus come to set us free from self. So if we can win the war of the flesh, 
the carnal desires inside of us, we cannot overcome that. We can't win the war against Satan. He will always win. Let me show you Jesus. And let's go to some scripture, Romans chapter 8, and probably read some scriptures there. Starting from verse 1, Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Hallelujah. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. So if we are in Christ Jesus, we are not condemned. It means to say, those who are not in Christ Jesus, they are already condemned. That's straight as the scripture is saying. Those who are not in Christ Jesus, or Jesus is not the Lord of their lives, they are condemned. God don't condemn anyone. People condemn themselves by not believing in Jesus. Not believing that God sent Jesus to die on a cross for, for humanity. That's why people are condemned. Because they just do not believe in Jesus. But he's saying something to us as Christians. He says we are not condemned because we are walking in the Holy Spirit. That means to say the Holy Spirit is the one that is leading us. The Holy Spirit is the one that is guiding us. The Holy Spirit is one that is controlling or taking control of our lives because we give it to Him. So we are not condemned when the Holy Spirit lives in us, but we are condemned when we walk after the flesh. Because the flesh should always bring condemnation. The flesh is not the body I'm talking about, but you see, the flesh is the self, the I man, the carnal man, the Adamic nature, the sinful nature that we are born with, if we allow the sinful nature to take control of our lives, dictate our lives, dictate our desires, then we are condemned. We are condemning ourselves when we decide to allow that kind of fleshy life to control, control us. Are you getting what I'm saying? Verse 2 says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. So because of Jesus now, we are free from the law of sin and death, which the flesh in itself produces uh, sin and death. There is no good thing that come out when we walk in the flesh. Is always negative things, bad behavior, bad habits, uh, the control of our life. If we allow the flesh to control us rather than the Holy Spirit. Got me? So you see now in, in Romans chapter 8 verse 3, you would see Jesus had that internal problem that all of us would have. The servant is not greater than the master. So what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. And this is the part I want you to see. God sending his own son as Jesus in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. So we need to look at Jesus. Jesus didn't come from Adam or that Adamic nature in the likeness of sinful flesh, that doesn't mean to say that he had a sinful nature, but it was like the sinful nature. Got me now? We were born with a sinful nature. Jesus, uh, Jesus was born of the Holy Spirit, so he was not born with a sinful nature, but God gave him to be, uh, uh, have him to come as a human in the likeness of sinful flesh. Got me? Now, when you talk about a likeness of sinful flesh, and I want to, I want to say, and the likeness of sinful nature, that means to say that Jesus was human. And he was tempted in every area that any human being could or would be tempted. Jesus was tempted in every area of life. 
And in his temptation, he never, never succumbed to these temptations. In all that Jesus went through, in the likeness of sinful nature, all that we are going through and all that we are facing, Jesus felt or uh, actually went through that, the pain and the suffering and the betrayal and the denial and family problems and disciples' problems and political problems and all kinds of problems that Jesus had to face because he was in the likeness of sinful flesh, but he never seen. Are you getting me? Jesus is the only man who never seen, but condemned sin in the flesh because of winning over the sinful nature. The devil did not have anything on Jesus because Jesus did not walk in the flesh or allow the flesh or the sinful nature to control his life. The Bible says that the, when Jesus was talking to the disciples, he says, listen, the devil have nothing on me. The only time Satan can have something in us is what we gave it, give to him. And that is the flesh. The flesh or the sinful nature is Satan's food. The moment you give him the flesh to eat, he's going to conquer. He's going to take over. And the flesh is no easy thing. Even though you try crucified every single day and, 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 and you stop crucifying and begin to feed the flesh, suddenly it's going to prop up. It's going to control our lives. Are you understanding me? That's why it's something that you have to do it on a daily basis. That's what Jesus said. If any man wants to follow me, let him first what? He must deny himself, take up the cross daily and follow me. In other words, since I know myself, Christianity is not just a one-time kind of stuff, once a week, once a month, once a year. It's an everyday dying, 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 dying to self. Every day. Not allowing the sinful nature to control our lives. Are you with me? Let me read a few verses right. Verse 4 said, It said that the righteous, righteousness of the law might be fulfilling us who walk not or live according to the dictates of the flesh or the sinful nature, but we are now living according to the new man, the born again man, born of the spirit, that which you become alive in. We are resurrected with Jesus. He says if you live in according to that, then the righteousness of the law will be fulfilled in us. Not according to those who are walking after the dictates of the flesh. I mean. Now sometimes people may, may not understand. Let me explain. The only way for you to understand this thing. This is not easy to understand, you know. When I preach, it takes me a long, long time and years and years for me to just come to an understanding. So it's just not going to take just one sermon for you to understand what I'm saying. It takes me my lifetime. And that's why... I, I, as the Holy Spirit would want to help to try to explain this thing. Let me, let me just skip a little bit and go uh, to Galatians chapter. I want to jump there quickly and, and see so you understand what I'm saying. I'll come back to Jesus just now. Galatians chapter 5. And let's read from verse 16 and we'll see some stuff there. Amen. He said, this I say... Walk in the Holy Ghost, allow the Holy Spirit to, to lead our lives or control our lives, so to speak. We're submitting and surrender, re, surrendering our lives to the dictate of the Holy Spirit. And if we are doing that every single day, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh or the desires of the flesh. In other words, uh, there are good desires in us that come from the, the, the new man and there are evil desires that come from the flesh. So inside of us we have evil desires and inside of us also we have good desires. They are fighting each other every single day as you will see in the scripture. Every single day they are fighting us. We want to do that which is good. We find ourselves doing that which is wrong because there's desires. It's all about desires. Desires. Desires, lost as desires, fighting inside of us. That's the internal battle that I'm talking about. Every single man have to win every single day. Are you getting me? Desires, I want to, but I just can't do it. 
have desire. Now that's that's not for the person who do, who is who those who are not Christians. That is not for them, because they have only one desire, and that one desire is to do wickedness. That's one desire they have is to be very religious. That's one desire. They have no fight and battle inside of them to do good or evil, but a Christian has. Because he's grafted on to Jesus. Now I explain grafting so many times. You can have many, many, many fruits in one tree. Many fruits you can have in one tree. When you graft many, many fruits to one tree, you can see all those fruits coming up. I'm just talking about we are grafted on to Jesus. Are you with me? There's only one fruit that you will see and that is the fruit of the Spirit. Let, let's go on. Verse 17. He said, this is the fight of the Christian. For the flesh, that is the, the desires of the flesh, that's the evil desires of the flesh, that is the sinful nature that we were born with. It fight it against the Spirit, which is the new man. There's a fight inside of us. The spirit has desires too, good desires. Good desires is fighting against the evil desires and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other. They don't agree together. If they agree together, then something is wrong. They can't live in the same house. Those in the flesh can't live in the same house as those in the spirit. Somebody has to die. Somebody has to be subdued. You say, these things are contrary or they are contrary to each other. So that he cannot do the things that he would. The fight and sign. And I know what I'm talking about. There's a fight every single day. The flesh, God spoke to me about that. He says you can't be delivered from the flesh. I said that last week. The flesh should always be there. But you can subdue the flesh. You cannot allow the flesh to take over your life because of Jesus' victory. Are you with me? You can subdue the flesh. Don't allow the flesh to take over. Don't feed the flesh with nothing. All these filthy things that we see. Watching the news, watching movies and, and on internet and all these stuff, that crazy things we see. That is feeding the flesh. Once you feed whatever you download, like I say, into your heart, that's what's going to come up. There's something I download and delete. We have to delete anything that is contrary to the spirit man. We have to have the authority and power to say, I'm going to delete uh, uh, all of these negative stuff which is not really working for me. Are you with me? Verse 18. For if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19. Now, why I come back here? Because I don't think people really understand when I talk about the flesh. When I talk about the sinful nature, you will know some things. You're going to see some things here, what really the flesh is. Okay? And so, when you're walking in the flesh, that's what you're going to see. Adultery. Fornication. I'm not going to explain all of that. So when you talk about people are doing these things as Christians, then they're allowing the flesh to control. That doesn't mean to say they're going to hell. It means to say that you need to do something about it. Either crucify that part of our lives or ask the Lord to help us and start feeding the spirit rather than feeding the flesh. So when people are walking in the flesh... You don't understand when I say flesh, I talk about sinful nature and it's manifested in adultery and fornication and uncleanness and lasciviousness. Let's go on quickly. Verse 20. Idolatry, anything that you put before God is an idol, it's fleshly. Witchcraft, you get involved in witchcraft, that's flesh, that's sinful nature. When you hate people and you murder people in your heart, that's flesh. You hate and you're angry against people. That's, that's what we were born with. The wrath of God was in us. Uh, the children of disobedience. That's what the flesh is all about. He says variance and emulation and wrath and strife and sedition and heresy. I wish I had time to explain all of that. All of these things are of the sinful nature that we were born with. Verse 21. 
Envy, when you envy and you're murdered, you don't have to take a gun and shoot anybody anymore. If you hate your brother, you commit murder in your heart. Drunkenness and, and all that, reveling, all that comes under, under the flesh and so much other things we talk about. The flesh, lying and all those stuff, they're all fleshly. Jesus said, and such like, well, you, we could talk of maybe one day I'll make a full list of all the fleshly things. He says, he says and, and such, and of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past time, that they who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. What more do we want? Now you understand the flesh? Those are the things. Once we're doing, I, once you continue to do these things, you're sure you're not going to be in God's kingdom. You're out of line because you're walking in the flesh. And if you're walking in the flesh, it's always going to lead to death. That's why Jesus came. He came for this main purpose that is, came in the likeness of sinful flesh is so that he can give us victory that we will not allow our sinful nature to control our lives, but we are now grafted on, born of the Spirit, have Jesus' nature, and as we grow in God, eventually some of these things, you won't have any desire for them anymore, because you're not feeding them, you have the power to overcome these things. Christianity is a growing thing. Many people have not, they still live in the flesh. That's a dangerous place to be in the flesh. Allowing the flesh to control our lives. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you have a little idea when I talk about we were born that way. So most people use that excuse to say, we were born, so we have to commit uh, adultery and fornication and idolatry and hate and backbiting and strife and lying and cheating and all that kind of stuff. He say all those things, we were born with that. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life. In other words, you can be born of the Spirit. You can have a new nature. You can be grafted onto me and live a life in the Spirit. Let's go on. Verse 22. Now he says, there's something about the fruit. So what are you going to see? You can't have a fruit without a seed. And that's my, that's my teaching for a long, long time. No one, anytime you see, you, you don't see fruits in, in a tree. Um, just like that. It, it, it has to start with a seed. Come on, somebody say Amen. You have to start with a seed. And the seed then grows up into a fruit. And when you see the fruit, so he's talking about the fruit of the Spirit. Then what is the seed of the Spirit? The seed of the Spirit is the Word of God. You can't have the fruit without the seed. The seed must be planted in the heart. That's the place the heart is a soil for the seed to grow. So we plant the seed, which is the word of God, in our hearts. And it's beginning to grow. It begins to grow in time and process. It's not going to become a spiritual giant just like that. And it's going to begin at some point in time to produce fruit. There is no fruits of the Holy Spirit. There is only one fruit. Are you hearing me? You look around and you see in all, even John chapter, chapter 15, you talk about fruit, 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 just fruit, 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 just one fruit. And that one fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. One fruit. So when a man has the word planted in his heart, and that word begins to grow, it's the engraft word of God, it's incorruptible seed whereby we grow every single day. The more we have the word planted in our hearts, it's more we're going to grow. And eventually you're going to love like Jesus loved. In other words, you're going to pray for them that despitefully use you. Do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you. The people you used to vex with, you're going to love them. The people you hate, you're going to love them. 
That's when everything begins to change in Christianity. If you're still hating people whom, uh, whom you're supposed to love, then you're still walking in the flesh. The flesh is in control. You have to know exactly what is in control. Look at your behavior and see whether the flesh is in charge or the spirit is in charge. That's why Jesus said, you must be born again, born of the spirit. Are you with me? So when you talk about the fruit, I want to have the fruit. This love that we are talking about is not human love. This is not filial love because uh, the English language can give you a proper definition of what love is. That's why we grow up in a culture today. The moment we see a girl or a boy, we love. You don't love yet. You lost. Are you hearing me? Because lust is something that we, is a desire inside of us that we were born with. So we lost. We lost for this, we lost for that. And the person have this and the person have that. Or the person have, uh, it's a nice person and all that. So we lost that person. We don't love that person. But love is a growing thing. You grow to love. Love your enemies. If, you, you, if we can't love our enemies, then the flesh is still in control. Are you hearing me? If you can't pray for them that they spitefully use you, then the flesh is still in control. If you still get to anger to a place where you get so mad, your flesh is still in control. You are in danger. But if we change all that, crucify all that flesh and begin to sow the seed in your heart, then everything is going to change. You're going to have what is called the love of God, the love, the love of God, which is the agape love. God's love. None of us are born with the agape love. None of us are born with that. We are born with filial love, that's human love. We are born with eros love, which is sexual love. And people think sexual love is love. That's not love. Are you hearing me? That's pleasure. Pleasure love. But you're talking about love, the agape love. So that's why the Lord, I explained that so many times. When the Lord say, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. That's the first commandment. That's what everybody, every Christian should be doing. Love God with your all. Then, after you love God with you all, then you love your neighbor. Your neighbor is people, not your neighbor next door. He says, you will love your neighbor or people like you love yourself. If you can love God, then you can love people and then you can love yourself. It all starts with loving God first. When you love God first, then you love people and then you love yourself. Are you with me? So God says, you know what? The only way that we can love God or reciprocate back the love that he requires is that we have to be born of the Spirit. We have to be born of the, of the washing of water of the Word. Which means to say the day we got saved, the Word was planted in our hearts. And as we continue to to put, to add and to, to meditate on the word that we put in every single day. We're going to grow into loving God. It takes my while for that to happen. But eventually we're going to reciprocate the same love that Jesus loves us with. We're going to reciprocate that back to him because of the word that is growing into the fruit which is love. I hope I ain't gone so high that you can't understand. It's simple. I've been preaching that for a long, long time. Are you with me? And out of the love, if you don't have the love of God inside of you, you, can, you cannot have joy. Because really love joy and love peace and love long suffering and love gentleness. That's how it really goes. So if you have the love of God inside of you, you're growing in your heart. The growing because the word has been planted, you will, because of love, you will experience joy unspeakable and full of glory. I'm not talking about happiness. I'm talking about the joy of the Lord. 
I'm talking about the peace of God. I'm talking about long suffering. You have that long suffering because of love, gentleness. You'll be gentle and goodness and faith and all of that. Verse 23 says so quickly as you go along. He said, meekness and temperance, patience against this, so no, there is no such law. Are you with me? So in other words, you can either grow in God or not grow in God. When people, if, if we teach people to love God and people experience the love of God, then, then, then the church should be going well. As long as people don't have love inside of them, the church can't go well. Because you're talking about flesh fighting against spirit. So we have fight in the church because we have fleshly people and we have sinful people, sinful nature, still led by the sinful nature. And we have the people who are serving God. You'll always have a fight unless we come to have the mind of Christ. You get what I'm trying to say? So there's an internal battle inside of all of us. I went there to actually show you what the flesh is because people don't really understand when I talk about the flesh. The flesh is sinful. The sinful things that we do, the things that we, that we do that is contrary to God, that's the flesh. Now coming back to Jesus, Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh. He was tempted in every area that we're going through. And it's the reason why he said, therefore, I want you to come boldly to the throne of grace. Why? Because we have a high priest. A high priest who understands all that we are going through now, all that we are, going, we are facing, all the trying times and temptations. He says, I have went through that. I understand it. I have overcome those things. As a result of that, Jesus is a high priest, sitting right hand of God the Father. He said, come to the throne of grace, and there you can find mercy and help in the time of need. So the person really to go and talk to every time we're in situations and, and desires that are not right, go to Jesus. Don't go to anybody else. Are you with me? But you see, Jesus had that internal battle also. In the likeness of sinful flesh, you'll find that a battle inside of him in the Garden of Gethsemane, you will know that Jesus was human and the flesh was there. The likeness of sinful nature was there. He's not sin. The nature is not sin, but the likeness. So he was he were tempted in every area that we are tempted now. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, and in this time of Easter time, you hear, you hear all kinds of preaching. But Jesus was there. He carried some folks to help them to pray. And every time he come back, he found them sleeping. Could you not watch for one hour? These days people can't even get up to pray for five minutes. Could you not watch for one hour? The master is in serious trouble. Um, he's praying, he's praying, and his prayer was uh, such intense that uh, it was like drops of blood that comes out in his sweat. That's how strong you were praying. And he says, he says, Father, if it were possible, take this cup away from me. But Jesus, of course, he, that's the human side. That's the likeness of sinful nature. He's talking. He says, I don't really want to go to the cross. I don't really want to die. And so many times in our life, we can have battles like that. I don't want to go that way. But look at Jesus conquering. He didn't wait for a moment. He said, nevertheless, let thy will be done. You see that? In other words, that, that's how we ought to operate. Their desires inside of us don't want to do some stuff. Their desires inside of us, we don't want to come to church. Their desires inside of us don't want to do the will of the Father. But we have to conquer that. We have to put the will of God as priority in our lives before anything else. Jesus said, you know what? I don't feel my desire is to go one way. I don't want to go. I have feelings inside of me. My emotions are so high. I don't want to go to the cross. I don't want to die. But he said, nevertheless, I, I, I am, I'm going to do the will of the Father. Are you getting me? Three times uh, that can show you the intensity of the internal battle that is taking place inside of Jesus. There's a battle inside of him. And of course, uh, uh, three times he prayed the same thing. And he came out victorious in the end. One time when the disciples 
He sent the disciples away to buy food. And Jesus was about to go to Samaria where he met the Samaritan woman at the well. And all of you know the story. And so when they came back, the disciples came back with the food and offered Jesus. He said, you know what? My meat is to do the will of the Father and to finish it. That's when you have the spirit man alive today. All your desire would be is for God. And that's not fanatism. That's not being a fanatic. That's about having the spirit of God leading our lives. It's going to lead to life and peace and not death. And so people are, are doing not the will of God and doing all that they can do in this world. Find themselves into serious trouble and they may not be able to get out on time. Are you getting me? Our hearts ought to be doing God's desire. What you desire, so shall we do. Are you getting me? That's when you're walking in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit desire is to do the will of the Father. And so if we are doing the will of the Father on the earth, certainly, certainly we are going to have life and peace. Now this is not no easy, easy preaching I'm talking about. I'm not going to go on. I'm not going to share more because this is a tough call. This is not an easy call. Are you hearing me? You're talking about every single day. I'm, I am telling you how many fleshly things that all of us are fighting against and we never win the war. Check out tomorrow morning and see how many times that the Lord say, get up and pray. Get up and read the word and check out. Do a diary for the week. And see how much time you spend with God every single day. Then do a diary and see if you're doing the will of the Father or you're doing your own will and doing your own business and see how it's going to work. See whether you're walking in the Spirit or you're walking in the flesh. But tonight, you have to crucify the flesh. I give you a lot. I can go along and talk a lot about this. But I, want, I don't want to. You know what Paul says? He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But it's not me that live it any longer. But it's Christ that live it in me. In other words, the life we should be living now is a life of Christ in us. Lord, what do you have me to do while I'm on this earth? Every single morning you should get up. Lord, what do you have me to do today? People say, well, you can't do that. I worked for the government for 42 years. I wouldn't allow the government work to manipulate me. I would never do that. God was always my priority. I would never allow the things in my house or my family or anything to deter me from doing God's will 41 years now. Never. I always put God first and anything that he asks me to do I would always do it. Right now I'm waiting for God, for a new move of God in my life and in this church. And, that, and God is also waiting until people get themselves in order. And the only way that we can move forward, we have to stop walking in the flesh, in carnal desires and carnal things. Because God cannot use people who are carnal. People who are carnal, they are natural people. A natural people cannot understand the things of God. A natural man is a man who doesn't have the spirit of God. A natural man is a man who cannot hear God and cannot move with God. And if we have too much of carnality in the church, we cannot move forward unless we come together to have the same mind of Christ, the same Holy Ghost operating in all of us, and you're going to see what God can do. That's all stand tonight. I won't talk much again. Father, we praise your name. I bless your name, Lord. There is none like you. We have to always prepare our body for church. When we come in church and we are tired and exhausted, what can you give to God? Nothing. We come in church, we're tired. What are you giving to God? Nothing. We have to prepare ourselves every time we come into the house of the Lord. Make sure that we spend some time with God. Make sure we ask God to give us the strength. And we come into the house of the Lord. We serve him with our all. God is a spirit. 
They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Father, I pray tonight that we will walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. The Bible says that walk in the spirit so we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. And there are battles inside of all of us. All of us as Christians who know the Lord, we want to do that which is right, but we find ourselves doing that which is wrong ever so often. We are defeated all the time when we allow the flesh to take control. I want to do that which is good, but I find myself not doing that. It's because sin is still in control. The flesh and sin is still in control. I'm not praying that God will deliver us. I'm praying that God will help us to subdue these things and crucify these things so we will not do that which is evil, but do that which is right. I worship you, Jesus. There is none like you. There is none that could be compared with you. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall be renewed in strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. Shall we renew in strength? They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord, to wait. Teach me, Lord, to wait. You know, we have to learn to wait on God. And I know many of us, we have run further than what God is saying. Try to do some stuff that God is not saying. We find ourselves in trouble. But it's always good to wait on God because His timing is the best timing. We always run ahead of time or we lag behind time. But we have to learn to hear what the Spirit of God is saying and work with His timing. When God says to move, we move. When God says to do, we do. When God says to give, we give. When whatever God says to do, we do it right on time. And most people and many people miss the blessings of God because we didn't do it in God's timing and expect God to work in our timing. Or when we feel that God should work with us, that's not how it ought to work. We ought to work with God all the time, every single day. That's what I know Christianity is. I know nothing else. I may not be 100%, but I'm sure most of the time I will listen to God. I will hear what God is saying. So we need to hear what God is saying. God needs to hear us too. So we are communicating with God. Hallelujah. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth, 
will I cry unto thee, and when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I, that is higher than I. Hear my cry now. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Higher than I, come on now. That is higher than I. For thou hast been glory to God. For thou hast been a shelter for me a strong tower and a strong tower from the enemy from the enemy and when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that is higher than I higher than I that is higher than I sing here my cry O Lord and hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto my prayer. From the ends of the earth, from the ends of the earth, will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Higher than I. That is higher than I. For thou hast been glory. For thou hast been a shelter for me. And a strong tower. And a strong tower from the enemy. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been glory to God. For thou hast been a shelter for me. A strong tower. And a strong tower from the enemy. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Higher is higher than die. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Higher than I. That is higher than I. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Higher. That is higher than I. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. And Father, tonight. Give us an understanding of what the flesh is and what the spirit is. Jesus. Give us an understanding about walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit. Knowing that walking in the flesh would always lead to death. That Jesus came so that we can live victoriously. And living victorious Christian life is about walking beyond this world 
are walking above the flesh, not having the flesh controlling our life. The flesh was controlling our lives before we came to Jesus. Now we are grafted onto him. We have his nature and therefore we feed the nature that God gives to us. And so when those desires come up to be to commit all of these acts, to lie and commit adultery and to hate and to, and to envy and strife and to get angry and bitter inside of us, when these things try to come up, Lord, the desire that we have for you or the desire in a new nature will control and subdue and fight against these things in the name of Jesus. And so we can live a life because those who live a life in the flesh cannot please God. The Bible says that in Romans chapter 8. We didn't go down there. They that walk according to the flesh cannot please God. Do that live according to the flesh cannot please God. And they that walk according to the spirit, they are pleasing God and they have peace of mind. And they have joy unspeakable and full of glory. This is what God wants you to have. It's not just come to church and go home. It's about walking in victory, walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. That we make declaration tonight that we are victorious in Jesus name hallelujah praise god praise hallelujah god. thank you jesus thank hallelujah you have won the victory Thank you, Lord. When we receive a resurrected life, we are risen with Christ in our spirit man to sit in heavenly places. That's above this world. That's above this, the flesh. That's above the sinful things of this world. That's what resurrection life is all about. When we are resurrected, we don't desire to live that life anymore. Are you getting me? If you still have the desire, then you have not win the war. And it's going to be a daily battle. You might win it today, but tomorrow the flesh rise up again. And so it's an everyday thing. We crucify this flesh Jesus. until it's dead. Jesus. Jesus. And never raised up again. Jesus. And Jesus. continually for the rest of your life Jesus. until you die to live in the spirit. Allow the Holy It's not an easy thing. Jesus. It may sound easy as I say, but it takes me 41 years of Jesus. battle every single day Jesus. to do what I do, that I have to fight on my knees Thank every you. single day Jesus. to conquer every day. Sometimes Jesus. fail, sometimes fall, Jesus. but I will walk victoriously in the end. Jesus. And I hope you take these words Jesus. because these words, are, these words are very words that Jesus. you won't hear these words very often. But I'm telling you that we can live a victorious life. Hallelujah. We can. Hallelujah. We have to fight. Hallelujah. We have to push forward. Jesus. Press forward. Jesus. Keep praying. Jesus. Keep reading the word. Jesus. Keep obeying God. Hallelujah. Because obedience, you're going to hear a lot Jesus. about obedience. Obedience. If you're not obedient to God, mm. there is no blessing. Jesus. Jesus. If you're disobeying God, Jesus. you're disobeying God all the time, 
then you're walking on the devil's side. Jesus. You're walking still in the sinful nature that we were born with, disobedience. And the wrath of God will come upon all the children of disobedience. Father, I thank you today. Bless all those online, oh God, YouTube, Facebook, who will watch it now and watch it later. That they understand there is an eternal battle. And it's for those who overcome. And those who overcome the flesh will enter God's kingdom. You, those who allow the flesh to, to control their life continually doesn't mean to say that one is, is, is going to hell when they walk in the flesh, when the flesh catch them now and again. No, no, no. It's talking about a constant battle that you have to fight until you reach the place where you're walking in the spirit and have no desire for the flesh anymore. And that's going to take some work and sacrifice and the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, bless everyone tonight. Give them an understanding. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands to the Lord. God is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his word tonight. Praise the name of Jesus. I think we had a short service tonight. Amen. So we are going home early. Praise the Lord. And tonight I want to encourage us. Remember the song that we just sang. When, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lord, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And if your heart is overwhelmed tonight, if it's heavy, it's, it can't contain anymore, or, you know, it, it's heavy tonight, go to the rock of Jesus. If you have to weep before him, if you have to bow down before him, throw yourself before him, go to the rock of Jesus tonight. He's going to lift you up. He's going to give you rest. He's going to give you peace tonight. Hallelujah. And for announcements tonight as we pick up the offering, we are coming back on Sunday morning for our Sunday morning worship at 7.30 a.m. and our Sunday school at 8.30, 8 a.m. Praise the Lord. And don't forget to watch The Unchangeable God every Monday on Harvest TV at 10 a.m. via live streaming. And on Saturdays at 7.30 a.m. every second and fourth Saturday at, on CNC3. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. And our prayer meeting and Bible study continues this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. And we will be having our Good Friday service. Good Friday service coming at 6.30 a.m. And our Resurrection Sunday service at 6.30 a.m. also. That is this weekend coming also. And don't forget our Sports and Family Day, Monday the 1st of April on the 20, Monday the 1st of April 2024 at the Bimsa Recreation Ground. And we are starting at 9.30 a.m. Amen? 9.30 a.m. with our March, March Dance Pass. And support your colors, your group colors. And you can see the colors there on the screen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory to God. If anyone wants to give a donation, you are free to do so for our sports day. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, O oh God, Lord, for this time in your presence, O oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you for, yes, O oh God, this opportunity whereby, O oh God, yes, we can God, just Jesus. worship and praise you, O oh yes, God. God. Just to lift Jesus. up our hands before you in adoration, O oh God, yes, towards God. you, O oh God. O oh God, in thanksgiving tonight, O oh God, Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for your word, O oh God. Your word that was powerful, your word that was strong, O oh God, tonight, yes, Jesus. God. Yes, Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, for it in the name yes, of the Lord. Help us, O oh God, to yes, seek, O oh God. God, your Jesus. kingdom tonight, oh God, in the name Jesus. of Jesus. Oh God, to crucify the flesh, Jesus. oh God, daily, Jesus. oh God, and to, oh God, to live a life that is overcoming, oh God, over, as an overcomer, oh God, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. God, help us, oh God, to live a life that is resurrected, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We praise you. We give you glory and we give you honor, oh God, Father. I pray, oh God, you would fill back your man's servant, oh God, with your anointing, oh God, strength. Thanking him, oh God, Lord. I pray, oh God, you will put 
back, O oh God, and not a word into his heart, O oh God, that he would, O oh God, give unto us, O oh God, on, on Sunday coming, O oh God, and, and whenever you would have him, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, a fresh word, fresh manner from above, O oh God, Lord. Hallelujah. And as we go tonight, O oh God, I pray for the offering, O oh God, I pray, O oh God, you're going to bless it, O oh God, and sanctify it, O oh God, multiply it, O oh God, bless everyone that give unto thee, O oh God, I pray, O oh God, that you will touch our lives, O oh God, O oh Father, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, Lord. Help, O oh God, Lord, strengthen us, O oh God, Lord Jesus. Help us to increase in faith tonight, O oh God. Anyone, O oh God, Lord, that may have a need tonight, O oh God, I pray, O oh God, that you, you are here tonight, O oh God, to, to, to meet that need tonight, O oh God, even whether they are online tonight, O oh God. You are here, O oh God, you are there, O oh God, to meet their need tonight, O oh God. Help us, O oh God, to, O oh God, Lord, exercise faith tonight and to call upon your name, O oh God. That name, O oh God, that is above every other name, O oh God, tonight, Jesus. That name, O oh God, that is a prayer that is answering tonight, O oh God, Jesus. Father, as we go tonight, O oh God, from this place, O oh God, I pray, O oh God, that your traveling mercies would go with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.